Edit and Edit Fields node can help you edit, transform and manipulate data using powerful expressions and built-in methods. If you are a beginner, you have come to the right place. In this tutorial, I will explain everything you need to know about N810 Edit Fields node. By the way, my name is Karthik. I make practical AI tutorials for beginners just like you. Let's get started. Go to N810 Cloud or your local installation. Click on Create Workflow. I am going to call it Demo. You can double click this to rename it. I am going to click and add a manual trigger. I will click on the plus button. And let's add a Google Sheets. I've prepared a sample Google Sheets to demonstrate the capabilities of Edit and Edit Fields node. So I'll get rows in a sheet. From here, click on Create New Credential and sign in with the Google account. I'll share the Sheets, Google Sheets, and I'll also share this whole automation workflow as a JSON file. So you can import it if you want. And from here, make sure you select the sheets called employees and choose top employees from that you can actually click test step to make sure that it's working so for every node there is an input and there is an output there's json representation of it which is essentially key and value pair there's table representation of your data and then there's schema which is essentially the data type representation of your data and item essentially corresponds to one data packet so one row corresponds to one item one email corresponds to one item so since here there are 15 items it means we got 15 rows in the sheet let's go and manipulate that i'll click on the plus button i can actually go to data transformation node and choose edit fields from here or i can directly type in the search bar and click on that now edit fields node is selected and again we have input for edit fields node and output for edit fields node if you look at the schema our input node has data types of numbers and strings how do i know well you hover over it you see a hash it means it's a number you see a letter a it means a string you can also click and drag this into manual mapping mode and that will automatically pick the type of data of your input node what are the other types i'll click here and there are boolean array and objects we'll get to each of that in this tutorial i'll remove that for now make sure you're in manual mapping mode how can i change or manipulate data the first thing you need is to actually drag the field that you want to manipulate i want to manipulate this name because i want to have the first name of the person i'll click and drag this and that will automatically give us an expression expression essentially is a dynamic representation of your data within the flower brackets if you said json dot name it will pull in the name now if i remove this name and just hit dot here it will show all the available fields i can use my arrow keys to pick any of the things that i want but right now we are just settling with string name cool how do i get the first name since it's a string you can just type dot after your text ends right before the ending flower braces i'll type a dot and based on the type of data it will show you different built-in methods that n810 has for you some of these are javascript methods some of them are customized for n810 now you can use your arrow key and just scroll through each of the method and on the right hand side you can actually see the description of the method now the first thing we want to do is to split the string and the separator that i want is just a space so within the single quotes i'll pass that as an argument now at any time if you don't understand any of this just ask chat gpt i'll show you the prompt in a bit and from here i just need to enter square brackets which stands for the index of the element in the array notice when i do split at the bottom it's showing the result is an array and if i want to access the first element i just need to use two square brackets after the parameter and just type zero when I type 0, it will get the first item in the array or first element in the array, which is our first name. If I type 1, it's getting a last name. So that's how you can manipulate name string. Since we just changed this to first name, let's call it first name. Now, when you don't change the name of the field, you're essentially editing the field. When you're changing the name of the field, you're creating a new field. Let's also create last name. I'll click and drag this. I'll copy this expression for now and I'll paste it here. And instead of 0, I just need to use 1. Now, again, 
if you don't understand any of this you can go to chat gpt and the first thing you need to do is to give it the input schema or the schema of the input node so i'll say this is the schema of the input node shift enter and paste the schema and after that i'll use shift and i'll say give me an a10 expression to get first name now chat gpt will actually give you the expression that you actually need you can copy and paste this into the expression field just like so if you don't understand just paste that and also whenever you do something it automatically shows the result at the bottom so that's one way to verify now we just took a string and we manipulated it and but you can also change the data type which i'll show you in a bit and why you would want to do that the next thing i want to do is to create a field called contact info that has name and email in just one field so how do i do that i'll first click and drag email into this i'll call this contact info again you can just go to chat gpt and you can ask i want expression you can continue the same chat so it knows the context expression to get this name brackets email and anytime will automatically give you an expression just copy that and i'll remove this and just paste it and at the bottom you can already see the result it's basically using the append function or the plus function of strings which i'll show you in a bit the next thing i want to do is to extract the website from which the email is sent i'll click and drag this again i'll rename this to domain and right after the text ends right before the closing brackets you can type dot to access all the different methods that this particular data has so since it's a string it gives you different built in methods and when i just pick or enter extract domain it will automatically give us the result of the domain you can test all of this now you can include other output fields but for now we'll just keep it simple and i'll click on test step you can go to json and you can see all the data that we got see we got a new field called contact info as you notice here it's only getting the data that we just specified here if you also want to include the original data you can choose this you can also choose all the fields to input or just selected ones and from here you can just let's say we just want to include total sales i'll click and drag that here and i'll click test step so it also includes total sales along with our newly created fields but for now let's keep it clean and i'll just click on test step because i want to manipulate the total sales as well you can also check if the email is valid or if it's not an actual email maybe user entered some junk data so i'll go to the employees google sheet so this is the data that our nn is essentially getting by the way i generated this whole thing using chat gpt you can generate mock data let me just mess up this email with some random characters and an email address cannot be that and i'll also mess up this out of our 15 items we don't have two proper emails let's see how we can fix that so again the same thing i'll click and drag the email field and right before the closing parenthesis after the text just type dot and there's a function called is email so when i pick that it will show us whether it's true or false let me actually run this test workflow again you can see the domain field is messed up and it has a value of null because this is not a proper email we'll say we'll call this field valid email and it's returning false but if you want to change this to a boolean field just click that and choose boolean because most of the times the true and false values fall under this boolean i'll click on test step and boom how do i know this valid email field is actually boolean you can go to schema of the output field and you'll find this checkbox which means it's a boolean field it can have only two values true and false so from here i knew that we don't have domain for first item and second item let me fix that so that way we can check the email validity cool let me just go back and run the workflow again just to make sure everything is working properly and boom now all the emails whichever valid email address you'll get this extra field called valid email true now let's start with the date as you can see the date in input is a string you can click and drag that and you know that by the data type here we want to change or apply some date specific functions to it how do i do that well the same thing just type dot and init and automatically suggests 
to date time that means we want to change this to date time so we can do stuff that we do with dates and times i'll do date time i'll do dot you can pick format and from here for each function you can actually see different examples and there's a link to formatting it i'll hold down command and click on that and that will take us to this list so based on the variable it gives us the output if we just want to extract the month this is what you want to use in the format parameter i just want to use a human readable date or let's actually copy this again you can use chat gpt if you don't know any of it it should be enclosed within single quotes and boom so when i click on a test step date changed or date join field will have this brand new formatting instead of the original formatting that we have in here and it's also a string but that's not it you can also extract the year you can extract you can just calculate the number of days most of the times we want to do so i'll again click and drag the date join field it's a string the first thing we need to do uh, dot enter date time again you just pick dot scroll with your up arrow or down arrow and just hit enter that will automatically pick the value that you want i'll pick dot and let's actually extract the year in which our employee has joined i'll pass the parameter it has values month year and day or hour as well so i'll pass the year and again at the bottom you will see the result and i'll change this value to year joined let's test the step again we get the year joined in here you can also change this to a number since this is a number totally up to you boom again you can check the output schema this is a hash which means it's a number cool now i want to calculate the number of days for which this person has been our employee it's also pretty easy using the date field i'll click here i'll just select dot date time is automatically picked i just hit enter hit dot again and i want to calculate or compare it to now right so difference to now in days but you can see our result is a negative number because this date was in past and now we are trying to calculate difference till now how can we fix that right before the closing parenthesis after all this ends use another dot and it shows all the available functions for the result till now i just want to round it off and i also want to use absolute method i just pick dot use my arrows if i choose absolute that will just give the positive value it will never be negative i can change this to employee for boom see that cool so employee for 832 i also want to add a days to this again if you want it to be a number you can just choose number and that's cool right before the closing brackets i can use days like so and you can see the result down below again you can use chat gpt for that now what happens when you choose the wrong data type now that i've added this string called days to this so that this can be clear what if i choose number here what happens i'll click on test step and see there's an error because here it's a string but we're choosing a wrong data type for the output that's why it's throwing an error well how can you fix that the first thing is click on add options and you can choose ignore type conversion errors this will make sure your data will somehow be always patched and there will be no errors like this i'll click on test step and now it automatically works even though i chose number it automatically fixed error on its own but a good practice is always to pick the output data type based on what you do with the data at the end of the day we're essentially getting a string right so the data type should be string there is another important function with date or built-in method again the same thing i'll click and drag this i'll say new date or something dot to date time so that we can use all the functions of the date time function of the date time object dot use format and this time i just want to get on which day the person has joined and if you go to the formatting guide if you want to extract the day it's this couple so let's try that out it's sunday i'll just test the step and boom you can see on which day the person has joined and change this to day joined i can also use other functions like if it's a weekend or if it's a leap year or totally up to you i want to do something really crazy right now i just want to change this total sales which is essentially a string to a number because i want to manipulate numbers and get or calculate total amount of sales or something like that i'll click and drag this it's a string 
how can I do that? Well, the first thing, if I look at the string value, I need to get rid of all the commas and dollar sign. Again, you can just ask chat GPT. I'll say I want to change total sales from string to a number. Give me in it an expression. Chat GPT, since we're already chatting with it, it knows the input schema, output schema and all that. And it will give us the total thing. So we can just copy this. Let's try it out. Boom. It gave us a number. Let's test that and see what kind of numbers we're getting. Again, here the value is number. Now we can change the data type to number and click test and boom. You can go to output schema and check that these are actually numbers. We're doing all of this. And if you want to include the original fields as well, you can just include all the fields or you can say all except and you can just exclude maybe date joint right now something like that click test step so it will get your original data along with your newly created data so that will be the part of your item if you go to schema so essentially we're changing the schema itself or we're manipulating the data and this change will be applied to per item so here we have 15 items you can see that this change applies to all the 15 items that are passed to edit fields node if you want to manipulate every node individually you can do that with the code node or ai transform node but that's topic for another tutorial since i now changed the total sales to a number i can actually go to the another data transformation node and i can calculate the total amount of sales so i can just say i'll click and drag total sales into this and it will calculate the amount of total number of sales. I have to change this value to sum. Let's click that. And boom. It's giving us total sales for all the employees. This template will be in the description along with the original Excel sheet I used for this demo. Make sure you go experiment with it. You can check out another N10 tutorial or check out N10 playlist if you are new to N10. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.